That's before we get in the video real quick. T-shirts, hoodies in stock. Go check it out. Front logo of the shirts and hoodies look as such. And then the back logo looks like this. Hoodies are made by a company called Independent. The t-shirts are next level. Hoodies are much thicker and heavier this time around. And these are much better fitting. Uh, much lighter shirt and uh, have a little bit longer to them. So guys, check it out up in the link above or just click down here and uh, check it out. Thank you guys for the support and let's get into the video. So I'm abandoning this for right now and coming back over to the car stuff I know. So door handles and then the mirror needs to come off here. So up in here, we'll see if I can get this to... So right there, we need to take this plug here. Hold on. Pull that, pull that sucker, come on. Pull that down, all right. And then there's two tens here. So when you pull those off, this is gonna fall off, guys. All right, hold on here. This is just gonna fall out. So you need to make sure you're holding it when you take those off. I was gonna use an impact, but again, I'm afraid to snap the studs off because they're just studs in there. And then for this too, uh, whoops, need to take this out. But I'm gonna pull this panel off to get the door handle out properly, I believe. I gotta look it up on the old interwebs again and make 100% sure. I'll probably get a message from Paul, Paul here saying, like, Ryan, you know you can do it this or that way. He's like the best critiquer ever. Don't even say critiquer, it actually really doesn't say a whole lot. But like if I do have something wrong, he's like, hey Ryan, you know you can do this. I'm like, nope, but I do now, thank you buddy. Um, I need to get more butyl tape to do all this. I have this really thick stuff. I need to get the thinnest. I wonder if they have like eighth inch or some tiny, tiny stuff. I want something just enough because I bought all new plastics for the door. Uh, it's just because they get old and it's just easier. They rip when you take it out. So yeah, let's get the mirror off. So I'm taking the door handle out now. I did a really in-depth video when I did her car. So it's just two tens here. And to get this one out, it's best of just pulling the door handle. You go through this hole here and then the other one goes through here. So if you look down in there. Can't see a whole lot, but that's what the door handle is. When you pull this out, you might have to push your hand in here like so, and just push up on these little plastic clips just to make sure we don't break anything. But now this needs to twist out also. I forgot about that. This little locking mechanism, we need to like twist it out. And then there's also a door lock like little plastic piece right here. I'm gonna see if I can get to it from the other side, but I gotta twist that out first. So let me get this. The actual door lock mechanism needs to like twist out. One other thing I wanted to show here is this goes to the door lock mechanism down there. Um, for this here, this slides into this, has these two little clips on it there. Let's turn this headlight off here. I think that's blowing it out actually. See the little detents on it there? Just use this and again, you can get this outside of the door and declip it from here and then when you slide it back in, it just needs to slide back on. You can screw it off too, but I think it's more of a pain. And I have a video reassembling all this. It's pretty darn detailed, explaining that, hey, this needs to sit like this when you put it back on. Um, and then the 10 millimeter goes through this to hold it. Um, there's two tens that hold this all together and that's it. So this lock can now fall back inside because it's actually part of this door lock mechanism that's over here uh, in the door. This can go back in too. Um, you can see this had a Mako paint job at one time. Like it's just tape lines and stuff. But now this one's out. Uh, let's do the other door and then I need to disassemble this get the plastic off. You can see the little plastic nodules there. I explained to you how to do that, along with how to take apart the mirrors, which I think I've shown that in another video too. I'm gonna actually go back to my own videos, see how I did it. Uh, Cause it's been a minute, it's been like three or four years and I want it to look nice when it's all said and done. All right, for the driver's side door handle, it is a little different in the fact that we gotta get this off here. So let's take a look here. All right, this here, so we gotta, see if I get my finger there. That's gotta be unclipped first. And this has this little actuator here. If you can see it move, see that little actuator there? There's a little screw right there. See that little screw? Gotta take that out after we unbolt this and then this comes off. So you don't worry about breaking it or having any issues and it'll just unbolt from it. So just hold on to that little screw then. I think it's like a little M4 or M5 screw, but you gotta have to unclip that. And then up in here, we gotta repeat the same process we did on the other side. So, oops. Yeah, look down in there, see if we can. Yeah, repeat the same process. So. Not the end of the world, but yeah, you can see it look, I mean, when I mean it was worn down, look, I wore it down to the, the bare, I guess, aluminum, the bare, I don't even know what that is, but I guess that's plastic. Is this plastic and this is aluminum? I don't know. Hmm, interesting. Colton's helping me here real quick. Uh, what we're doing is drilling out the backside to get this plastic off. As you can see here, it comes loose, but it's not designed to come out. It's like riveted in. So Colton is drilling it out. Got this from my buddy, Paul, who has been a legend today. So he's just drilling this out slowly. That should be good. And then either pulling on it or using this little pry tool if we can. Let's see if you can get behind with this even. That's too much. Nope. Oh, there it goes. And then that should be it. 
then you can feed this off. And the reason we're pulling this off is so we can clean this up and paint the edges because it sits on the car. Your car will be beautiful, but the edges are like just nasty. So now that that's done, you can see there's one, two, three, four spots for it. Uh, the other thing we have to do is we have to cut this off, this little nub right here. What did Paul say to do with that? How do you say to get Drill that? Drill it out. Drill it out. Okay, yeah. Drill it out, and then we got to remember how the spring goes in, so document that there. So the spring sits like this as it comes around this side here, so it snaps in like that and pulls out. So, all right, we can, uh, yeah, try that next. All right, so we took the plastic off now, and again, this is something 99% of people don't or won't do, but what we did is ground this down, so I've got this little Milwaukee tool here and use it as a grinder. Don't do it like that. But took my time and I just finally, I put black marker around to make sure I didn't hit anything. And at the very last bit, I hit it here. And then he was smart about, as you can see, this is how it looked before. Okay, it has this solid pin, it's pressed in. Now it is pushed out. And then what you use there to punch it out with you, I think we literally used a punch, didn't we? Oh, right here. Just a little punch like this. And he went in here and pushed it out. And now you can see we put a plate under it to give it some rigidity. So I got it clamped in here with a rag. And then as we came down, it pushed this pin out. Now again, we're gonna have to tap this side. Um, then I'll use like blue Loctite or something to hold it. So I gotta see what hole that is roughly versus the pin size, but I think I'm gonna need like a 10 millimeter. So I might have to drill this out a little bit. We'll see what I need to go to, but I wanted to show you guys just to give an idea. So now we're gonna pull that out. Do you wanna pull that out so we can show it as all one motion here? Cause that, now be careful with that spring. It's the only thing I'm worried about. This spring still has tension on it guys, so. Wow. Yeah. See if you can pull that spring out without killing yourself. Oh, it's, ah, it's not having nearly as much tension as I thought. <laughs> so we put tape on it there in case the thing skipped and it would hit something. I just didn't want to mark anything up. Now that spring needs to be pushed out somehow. Mm. I'll show you the other one here, but he just popped this out. So we'll show like spin it around here a little bit so we, they can see here. So there's the mechanism as it came out. And now this should, the handle should come out now. Uh, if you want to set it down there. So that comes out. Now this in theory, that whole thing should come out. It just got it on the lever. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm, maybe it's wrong. Maybe there's more we got to take off yet. I could be wrong here. Is there more to it? Nope. Mm -hmm. And that's just rocked in there. And now when you go to paint this, like her car, I wasn't able to do it. Uh, I'm not going to take this plastic piece off. I'll just leave that for now. But it looks like that's like kind of like a wear item. But this is plastic. If you can hear aluminum, but this, I always thought these were metal, but these apparently are, are plastic. Did not realize it. Thank you, Colton. Thank you, Paul, really. Okay. So this here is, I think for the factory alarm, there's like a little switch you have on there that actually goes to this little bolt hole with, for the driver's side. Uh, but we can't slide this out without taking it and it's plastic welded in. So he's going to cut this off. I really don't care about having this because again, it's for the factory alarm. I guess if you try to break in or something, I don't know. Um, I don't have anything to my phone or anything like that. So if I'm not right by the car, it's not gonna do me a whole lot of good. So he's gonna snip that off and yeah, we'll pull it through. All right, so a couple things we need to do here. You have to pop the mirror off. So we've popped this off. You literally get up under it from this side and you gotta get in between this meat of it here. So there's see the thin piece and the thick piece, get up under that and it pops off here. And then you see like these two little like, almost like round pieces, it hooks around that there and it pulls off, the mirrors are heated and then you gotta pull the screws out. Then there's this little piece here that Paul Rosenbaum told me that you need to like cut that off. Before you can do that, you have to depin this. So I wanted to show the wire colors. It goes red, black, I just started to depin the two. You gotta pull this piece out. So this little guy here is inside of it. Okay, almost like a Deutsch connector where it sits like this. You can see the little ridges, the ridges stay down. So it came out like this. All right, which is the ridge side down, and that's how it will push back in then one day. Then you need to get a D-pin tool. I actually got this from Jose Valia Kaizen, and uh, stick up in there and D-pin it. But there's two blue, so I don't know if that matters. One looks like it has a silver stripe, the other one doesn't. What about this side? This one's a little bit different because this one has a green wire on it. If you look at it here, hold yeah, on. Yeah, so the second one has the gray stripes on it. Let me see here. So the second one has a gray stripe. It looks like both of them do though, almost. What I might do is put a piece of tape around one of them. See if we can mark it somehow. Put a red marker on it. 
No, like, the first, so the first one's all, well, no, the first one has gray stripes on it too. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So we'll have to mark it with something uh, to know how to do it, but that'll show you how to depend it. But three of the wires are pretty easy, red, black, and white. And this one here is the same. If I look at it here is red. So it's red, black, and then green, and then two blues. I don't know why they switched that. I have no idea, but they did. So finish deep pulling those out, and then this should be able to feed out, and this will completely separate. This way it can be painted properly and scuffed properly. So when I depin this one here, which this should be, if I'm looking at it, this is the driver's side mirror, which is these colors here with the white. The very furthest one, so if I'm looking at this from the top down, okay, so like this, the very furthest one to the right, we put a piece of black tape on it to recognize and it might not even matter this might be like reverse lights where it just doesn't matter but just to be safe then sorry put it back in the same spot um yeah and then we'll be able to pin it back in and then the screw came out with it too so i would have put this in the baggie because this needs to go like that then so okay next thing all right so once you get the mirror apart enough so we got the the actual glass out again i showed you how to pry up on it you take the screws out all right then you've got a deep pin it which i've showed you you pull the wiring up through that, it comes to this hole. Now, you're like, well, it still doesn't come apart. It has this like inverted, I don't know what this thing's called, but- Lock washer. Lock washer, thank you. Uh, so we gotta cut it. We're using a Dremel and we're using a carbide bit to get in there and cut this off. Just be careful to not nick the spring. If you do it a little bit, it'll be okay. But obviously we don't wanna uh, ruin the integrity of that there, because this is what allows it to lock when you get hit. Um, if you know someone taps the mirror. So you gotta cut that off. And then Paul also sent me the link for that. So I wanna make sure I get the right ones. I don't wanna link it in this video because I'm not sure it's the exact he wasn't sure, so I want to make sure we get the right one. So he's going to cut that, and then there, oh, he already took it out. There's one more screw that is in the center then that you need to remove that helps hold this plate on, and then this all slides apart. Okay, so once you get it all apart, this will slide out, okay? So all that's left is this. Now, that black one piece just pulls out too, right, Colton? Yeah, there's, two screws at the bottom, though. There's two screws. Okay, there's two screws at the bottom you need to pull too. On top of it, to get this out, you'd be like, why is it not coming out? There is a little clip right here, so he's going to... Use a little flathead. Don't take a whole lot of pressure, and it just pops off. And now you've got this. Now, you guys don't need to do all this. I'm just being extra because I'm going to repaint the car a totally different color. So I'm just being as extra as can be here. Um, and again, he cut this off. You can see there it popped off. There's your spring, and there is a washer on the bottom. So now i got to get these inverted ones. I don't know where to get this. We're going to have to do some research to try and find the exact size. All righty. So... Let's uh, start taking this apart because we've got to replace the cam gears, but it does look like it just dripped down back behind it here. It looks like this front one here is where it dripped down back behind and would make sense why it leaked down from here, came through here, and it only did this side because this side's fine. So that would make a little bit more sense. We got to take out the coil packs first. I'm not even going to unplug them. I think I'm going to do them all and just pull them out so I know which is which here. Just kind of makes things a little nicer. I got to take those out and then... I can, do I have to take these off? No, I don't. So take those off, I can leave the brackets in, uh, take the valve covers off here, and then when I take the valve covers off, I can then see everything in there, hold the, I think it used a 22 millimeter up top, zip these off. Um, I'm gonna have to check timing and all that good stuff again, so not the end of the world. What I might do is turn the engine over till it's at TDC. Um, so everything's lined up. So when I put everything back on, it should be within reason. I might do that to save myself some headache here. The more and more I look at it here, there's oil down here. I could see it on the coil packs too. So it looks like when I put those on, maybe I didn't tighten them up. You can see the back, this one here, you'd think more of that one, but I guess the oil, when it runs back, it pulls more towards this side. So nothing too crazy, but it's definitely leaking over. The other ones have nothing. So it was coming from what I can see here, this corner here right there and you can see the FIPG so I have to scrape that reseal that better and yeah I think that corner is what was causing me the issues so this it would be this here where it's just sitting on there sorry it'd be this corner here and what you can see is pretty well soaked too so I guess that's where it pushed out from you can see actually this is it's all wet okay maybe that's where it came from it's the only thing I can really think of um, got to pop the other one off here though. Uh, I'm going to pull this out, clean out all the oil in there. And then uh, what I'm going to do on top of that yet, <laughs> excuse me, is I need to get, I think it's, is that 22 on that? I have no idea. It might be bigger than that. I can't, I can always forget. It's got to be bigger than 22. There's no way. Yeah, it's tiny. This is tiny. Yeah, no way. <laughs> it's got to be like probably something stupid, like a 32 or something, or 34, 36, something high. All right, so 
Since the cams are off, everything in here, I do have to clean out the little bit of oil in there. Cleaned off all the oil around this. Again, I'm still thinking it's there. Uh, I've got to take tension off it. There's two 12s here. Uh, it's one place I don't use titanium, I use the factory bolts. I think they're alignment bolts too on top of it. This is an old school, I'll take this off too. This came from, well, I can't think of the company name, but I might want to upgrade it just to be safe because I've heard of other like parts from this company breaking. They were based out of Australia, I can't remember. They used to make the coolest looking parts, but I remember control arms and stuff breaking from them. God, I can't think of it. I think when I pulled it off, I think it is etched. Um, but that was one of the very first ones of these aftermarket pieces that use the brass bushing. Everyone else just made a steel piece and then they would like seize up. This one actually used the brass bushing. So I need to pull this off. Then I need to find the pin and then I'm gonna have to decompress this slowly. You gotta slowly bring it back in or you screw up uh, how it works or I might just buy a new one. So do that. I need to go ahead and pull this off. Don't lose that. That also round edge goes in and I need to get a belt sometime. So I did line up the tick marks here. So one there. In there uh, to line up the timing. Now I will have to recheck it all again because I don't trust that. Um, same thing here, because you can see down here, even this, if you look, is just a C hair off right now. Look, that dot right there, that dash should be lined up with that dot. And it's just, looks like it might be a tooth off, which is not good. Um, so I need to look at that because that's a little disconcerting. So yeah, because if we come up here, that's there, that's that, so. Yeah, that looks like it's almost like a tooth off, to be honest. So, got the belt off now. Again, this still looks pretty well on point. Again, I will have to make sure it's timed perfectly. Um, belt's off. I got to clean this up again. Once I pull this off, I want to see where that oil came from, because that is disgusting. That was a brand new pump, too. So, what I'm doing next is, with the old Keystone in the way, I am setting up my powerhouse racing cam gear. So, it's my first time having adjustable cam gears that I'm not using for adjustment. So it does come with all these adjustment pieces, or this actually might be sold separate. We'll see if it's got, it does have a separate part number here. So there is a separate part number, uh, but here is the part number for the, which that is all rubbed off. So this one too. Yeah, they're mostly rubbed off on these, but because you can just buy one because some cars like a VVTI car only needs one of them. Uh, in my case, I got two. So thank you to Sam, Brian, everyone over at PHR. Uh, I've had these for a while now, but then I wrecked a car. So kind of a prime time to at least put them on now uh, while the engine's out. There is instructions here, guys. You want to pay attention to this. I've already done this one. I'm doing this next. Loctite. Then they supply you the Loctite, which is right here. This 242. Uh, 70 inch pounds or 5.8 foot pounds when you're done. So you take these out. There's a little Loctite. Apply that to the bolt threads there and then torque it down. Uh, use this to take it off. Please make sure you torque it down because this is something that is inside the engine. If that screws up the belt, that can be a really bad day, especially with big cams. Um, so yeah, make sure you pay attention when it comes to this. They also supply these cool bolt washers. They didn't even etch that says PHR there. See, I'll show you that there. It says PHR and then powerhouse racing there. I thought those are pretty freaking cool. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take those off here in a second, but I'm going to finish putting the Loctite on this first. So belt is off of course, and now I am going to put on these beauties. So these were fine too. I had these actually Cerakoted and look how well, I mean, probably has like six, 7,000 miles on these. No wear at all. Cerakoting is amazing, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, it kind of works like anodizing in the fact it goes on very thin, um, but the wear resistance and it doesn't change colors. So much better wear resistance and it doesn't change colors. So that black stays black. Uh, but with that being said, anodizing is nice because it works with aluminum. So I believe these have a steel ring on them. I'm, don't quote me on that. But I think the centers are aluminum. The outside is a steel ring uh, to help keep weight down, which I think is pretty cool. And yeah, so let's guess finish doing this here. I also got the backing plate off. And one thing I did notice, so I ordered new front cam seals. I ordered new valve cuff, valve gasket seals. Goodness gracious, I can't talk. Uh, because the oil was coming from here and over here, leaking down the side of this here. And you can see it leaks the whole way down and it would make track with it going right down through here. So that's where it was coming from. Um, I, I'm a little shocked. Like, like, it's like, wow, I can't believe that's what was causing all that, which is kind of funny, but at the same time, like, all right, that's cool. So I can just clean all this crap up now, get all that gunk out of there. I'm going to pull this gear off here, um, just so I can get all the gunk off of it. And yeah, that I might just pull, the, I'm afraid to pull the pans off of it, but I feel like I should pull the pans off at least and reseal it while the engine's out, because it's one of those things, if I don't reseal it, I'll be like, damn it, I don't want to have to pull this in a year or two. Um, so at least to reseal that properly, 
but I didn't have any leaks before, so mm, don't don't fuck with what's fine, right? Just leave it alone. More, some more one to show here. You can see it was definitely spitting oil out there, and you can see where it runs down all over the back of this here. This is all covered in oil. So found my culprit uh, again. Intake side or exhaust side was fine. It was just the intake side, and I guess it just started to do it. I'm not sure why, but I'm gonna pull the front cam cap off. Um, and get that all cleaned up, re-scrape it, all that stuff, and then I'll put FIPG in these corners when I put the valve covers back on with new gaskets, because I'm not taking that chance. And yeah, just pulled the, oh shoot, the PHR crank pulley off, that's a 36 and two. So put that back on then. Wanted to just clean off the backside, give me better access to it. Uh, but there's no real leaks there. Like, I mean, you could see it was dry, the back of it was dry too, but it was just from what was leaking down. So yeah, that's what it was. That that was insane. So I guess I didn't crank it down well enough or put enough FIPG up there just on that side. So I want to blame it on the cam cap slash me not putting enough on there. So, okay, cool. But now that is all cleaned up. That's beautiful. Uh, I got the front cam caps off now too and the bolt sitting there cleaned all the crap off of it there. Cleaned most of the front of the engine with some brake cleaner. Started wiping down the block too. Um, again, it's not going to be perfect just because it's not designed to be... It looks like there's oil sitting there. Oh, is there oil leaking down from that? That's something I might want to look into here. Is there oil coming from that ring? Ooh, so I might have found something here. We'll see, because there's oil on my hand there. Might have been, again, coming back from all that crap coming off of it. But I uh, cleaned up everything up here. I got to scrape this a little bit better in these corners here. Um, put the uh, cranks, uh, crank, uh, oh my gosh. I just need to put the crank gear back on. I uh, took out the sensor here, cleaned up around the sensor with the oil and stuff. Again, it looks like I didn't put enough FIPG. It should be enough. It never leaked before, but I think I'm gonna take the pan and everything off, scrape it, reseal it. I'm debating still getting this powder coated like silver, just cause it does look like crap, uh, even though I hit it with brake cleaner. Uh, so I might just do that. Mm, trying to see if there's anything else, but yeah, it looks looks okay. And I need to paint this area here since this won't be covered up anymore. I need to paint that so I'll have to hit that with some brake cleaner scrape all that out and get some paint on it uh, because it's not needed for the uh, oh crap my goodness I am losing my mind here this morning guys goodness gracious power steering um, but yeah that's I'm wondering if that's from this now it looks like it must have been coming back from here so not a big deal then I got cam caps whatever pulled and cleaned out all the crevices for the um, valve covers here Prep for that. I'm also going to the race tonight. I'm going to go watch John Stats race. So I'm kind of excited. So I'm getting this all plugged up and hopefully I can get a little interview with him. So seeing him come back, it'd be not exciting. Um, the car hasn't, I think he said since 2019, so four or five years now. So I'm excited to see how, see how he does. Post on this on the old Facer books, but if you guys can see in there, it is gunked up city. It is bad, like really bad. And uh, people apparently didn't read the post. Uh, the car has been was consuming oil like crazy, like absolutely insanely amounts of oil. And um, yeah, apparently no one read that part. So it was like, oh, it's gunked up because of E85. Yeah, that's I, that I get. I understand gunking with E85, 100%. E85 does not cause you to eat a, a quart of oil every 750 miles. So and the car had no blow pipe. We had no, um, excuse me, uh, I had no... Um, Oh shoot, crankcase pressure. So we know the valve covers are working. The engine in theory should be fine. Looks at the head issue. So is the valve stem seals or is it the valve guides? Um, it's one of the two things, right? So, so yeah, um, not what I planned on doing. Uh, I didn't plan on taking the head off. Mm, not yet, yeah, not, this wasn't in the card. So the head is actually gonna go to uh, JMR at uh, RS Garage and he's gonna take a look at it. Uh, I just wanna see if it's something I did wrong, um, see where, it's, could I tuned it wrong? Could I have done something wrong myself to cause this? It looks mechanical, but valve stem seals or the valve guides fail, or he could find something and be like, Ryan, it's nothing. And I'll be like, okay. Nothing in the intercooler piping, nothing out of the turbo. Um, yeah, no real smoking or anything of that nature. Cause I mean, I even have video, there was a little bit of smoke once we had the new 6870, but I'm like, ah, you know, 6870, new precision, not unusual, but I'm like, that's not, something's not right. So I'm like, okay, um, yeah, just, just weird. I'm just, 
a little bit like scratching my head like, well, that doesn't, doesn't make any sense. So that's that. Uh, again, I just actually, hold on, flip it around here. Just actually took the cans. I just put everything together and I just took it all back apart. Um, I got to put the caps back on here and I got to get some foam just sitting between here so the buckets don't fall because I want to have it make sure it's in order as it gets shipped to them here. Um, and I got to clean out as much oil as I can within reason. So yeah, just damn. Not, not, was not on my bingo card to do. Um, so I'm very thankful Jay is willing to help me here, uh, get this up. My buddy Alex at Absolute Driven Performance, uh, got me in contact and I'm gonna actually talk to Jay today, uh, to see what, you know, possibly could be. Um, I didn't spare any expense when it came to this build, whether the bottom end and top end. So I guess it's where I'm a little frustrated. But again, it could be something I did. I don't know. Uh, inside of here is just so gunked up. So, that's where we're going to end this video, guys. So thank you all very much for staying tuned in with all this. This is, is this episode four or five. I can't, even, I can't even keep up with the episodes anymore. Uh, the car itself, which is back here, should be going to paint within the next month or so. It's just really looking for him to have an open space to put the car in and get it painted. Because uh, as soon as that's done, then we'll start putting it back together and get everything back in. But that's why I want to get this done as soon as possible because I want nothing holding up. Once the car comes back from paint, I don't want it to be like, well, I need to buy this yet. Well, I didn't do that yet. I want to make sure I have everything back and it's just go, 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 go. I don't want to have to think about money or anything of that nature. I just want to be able to put it together and everything's here. It just makes it a lot more fun when I'm like, shoot, I got to pay for this or buy that yet. So... Yeah, and how you can help me out is buy some t-shirts, which you saw at the beginning of this video. Buy a t-shirt, buy a hoodie, help a brother out. Thank you guys very much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.